What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Eric Sheets, Aber. We're going to be talking through tonight's NBA slate. Had a very blah night last night. I, I, I basically almost exactly broke even. I don't even know if there's a way you could come closer to breaking even. Tonight. It was like within a couple dollars. Um, but you know, had some good things. I ended up with a little bit of Luca and with uh, with you know some non Knicks full stacks and just quickly and Randall. So there there was some goodness there. But nothing, nothing special and uh, ready to get into this, which will be my last slate of the NBA season because I will be gone tomorrow. So, of the, of the, of the, I'm sorry, the NBA uh, 2022. So hopefully we can leave it with a bang. Sheets, how are you doing? And let's, let's, uh, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this? One? Same, same with me. I'm not going to be out, uh, around tomorrow night um, for the NBA. If there is NBA tomorrow, I don't even know. Um, uh, but I'll be around uh, for, after all, Sunday uh, for the NFL. And, uh, I tell you, last night's NFL game was a little illuminating um, because, I mean, even Dallas, who kind of needed to win, even they were starting to gear down their starters. You know what I mean? Yeah. A little bit. So uh, it's making me not like the Jacksonville play as much as uh, I, I thought I would. It's making me even nervous about the Philadelphia play a little bit. Uh, so I have to, I have to, I have to keep an eye on that. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, we'll get into it. So I'll be live with you uh, now for that one Sunday. Um, let's, why don't we pull up your screen and we'll go game by game. Yeah. So what this is, I, I can't quite think of a good, uh, a good title for the slate, but it's kind of like the, the, uh, what you call it? The, uh, the, the postmortem of the, of the updated malice at the palace uh, situation. Um, yeah. Because, because Detroit got into a big fight with, um with Orlando. It wasn't even that big of a fight. Honestly, but but uh, they they got into a fight the other day, and and basically the whole Orlando team was suspended, uh, and and a couple of pieces from Detroit were suspended too. Of course, Orlando was unlucky that the fight happened in front of Detroit bench because I mean, you know th that that rule that started way back when 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 uh, Ewing got involved with the with, uh, with with the Heat fight or something like that. That for some reason it's like it's like worse for a team for for guys from the bench to come you know defend their teammate then the then the guys on the bench to pile on you know what i mean uh mm -hmm. so, so, so they really they really punish the people for having the audacity to go leave their own bench to help their teammates as opposed to whatever <laughs> so nonetheless what the nba did was instead of they suspended pretty much everybody that was involved but if they actually carried out these suspensions they wouldn't have seven players to play with tonight. So what they did was they allowed them to spread it out over a couple of days to make sure they had the minimum. So what you have is, well, it's not as bad in Detroit as Orlando. Um, Orlando is going to have like eight guys uh, total active. Um, and yeah. you, we know what happens. I mean, that, 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 that concentrates the minutes and it makes the values pretty, pretty tough to fade. And then we get to Detroit. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that affects Detroit. It's not quite as, as, belligerent over there as far as the the suspensions go but we'll take a look at it i guess we could just uh yeah why don't you start off like because because I, I think that this is an interesting spot and i'm happy to, to weigh in it's it's basically for me i just look at it as okay i've got to play at least three or four of these guys as of right now but the weird part is it's not like they're projecting quite like you'd imagine you know uh, and they're only five point underdogs in this game i also think this is a very suspiciously high total uh, for a game like this, what, what what are your thoughts on this one, Chiefs? So my thoughts is that um, is that you could play five if you wanted to. Um, the my, the other the other the other th thought here is that there's to, at least to me a very big difference between the start starting five, whatever the five like reasonable guys and the three guys that are just kind of like worse, um, and. I'm just kind of filling in all these Orlando guys to to give you an idea of what's of what's going on here. So you have Markel Fultz, Wagner, Bonchero, Bol Bol, and Terrence Ross, all of whom you know are actual basketball players that we've seen before that can put up fantasy points or whatever, and they're all going to play 40 minutes, right? So 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 that's to me that's I don't know where what the projections are saying really, but it's. Bull 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 is going to be a hundred percent owned. I mean, I, yeah. I, that that's 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 one thing. Um, maybe not a hundred, but you know how it goes. Um, and all these other guys at forty minutes, I I think it's tough to fade. What what I don't think I have to do is play that much of the other guys, like the Admiral Schofield, the C. House Stan, and the uh, and the Kavon Harris. 
Now, the thing is that those are the guys that are really cheap. Like those are the three K guys. Right. Um, but I don't know. I just, I just see this world where those guys get only like 18 minutes or something like that. <laughs> like to, and they just roll these, these other, these other five out and just try to prove a point that we could, we could win anyway with all these guys. I don't know. Um, so I think that maybe not five, but maybe you can play five. I mean, if you knew all five of these guys going to play for 40 minutes, maybe, maybe it's not the worst idea in the world, but I think, I think that you'll end up with a minimum of three. The only reason why I wouldn't say a minimum of four is because there was also good value in Detroit. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, but listen, the good news is it's seven o'clock and we know what's going on right off the bat. So that's, that's my take on the Orlando side on the Washington side. Um, you do have a uh, Beal as uh, questionable, and he ended up not playing right after he actually warmed up and then was ruled out, which is interesting. Hmm. Um, and I guess one thing you could do, and I don't think you even have to, is I mean, you could just play these guys like Beal and or Porzingis, if if you know, depending on who's in, or Kuzma, and just game stack this whole thing, you know, and and just really turn it into a one game slate. Now, again, yeah. you're giving up a lot of good plays later on in the day to do that, you know. Um, but uh, it's certainly one way to play. It is, a, it is a low total. You know, it's only 225 compared to, like, these 240s uh, like in, in, at L.A. For, uh, I feel like that total feels pretty high for the, for, the, for the situation, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, no, I guess. I guess but that's, that's what these guys are going to do. I mean, like, these. Yeah. listen, the, the, the fact is these five guys that I'm talking about for Orlando, they're all, like, at least four of them. Or guys that start that would start anyway, maybe you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So you put them on the court and, and just challenge them to play forty minutes. I mean, they're going to put up they're, they're going to put up the same type type, type of production, honestly. Mm-hmm. That if the nine of them were combining to do the same thing, I mean, it's mm-hmm. maybe not really, but but I but that's I, that. Listen, this is this I remember back from AAU. You know, like when when we we play with like ten guys who would do worse than we play with six. You know, because right. like you knew that the six top guys are going to be in there like the whole game. Um, Yes, obviously the NBA is different, but maybe not that much different. Well, so like, that's 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 my take. What what did what did you view on Orlando, Washington? What, what do you got here? So the eight, and you're right. Like a lot of these guys are, are guys who you know that they can all play minutes. The one thing that that you know all the cheap ones though are, there is volatility with. Like you know what I mean? That it doesn't. It, Terrence Ross may play just twenty minutes. You can see those these guys all play just you know what twenty some odd minutes, and I'm including Ross in that category. I don't think that's out of the question that they do that, and then the other guys play forty. But I don't know. It's something about it like doesn't feel as glaring. Maybe it's just sort of my recency, like because of the Knicks last night, for example. If the Knicks only played nine guys last night, and you know one of them was Jericho Sims at like ten minutes, and they still only had two guys get there. I don't think it's a guarantee that all of these guys have to get there. So I I think you could even you we'll we'll, we'll finish it. We'll we'll go through the whole list of stuff. You know uh, you know all the games before we decide, but. I do think there's going to be some lineups where I'm only going to get two of two of the Orlando guys. Um, yeah. So but you, but you I, agree I that Bull Bulls, Bull Bulls, got, Bull Bulls got to be the best player, though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Bull, it, it, yeah, and, and and the preferred guys for me are are, are the the guys you'd expect. Bull Bull followed by Wagner, followed by Bancaro, followed by Fultz. I guess the, no, those four are basically like okay, Wagner, Fultz, and Bancaro. I have is all, like almost all exactly the same in terms of how you know how much I'll be using of them. Um, Bull Bull will be the one who will be hard, the hardest to fade. Um, but but, you, but your point, your point is well taken. It's not like these other situations where you have these guys that are like three K, you know, right. like, and that's happened before too, you know, where you've had like six guys, seven guys from X, Y, Z team, but whether it be the nets or Miami sometimes, you know, where you get 3,500 hour guys, they're going to play 40 minutes. These are six K guys plus, you know, so it's not like, it's not like they're they're all, listen. They're not going to always get there, even with forty minutes. Right. Right. So I, that's I. So yeah. So I think and, and I think that if you do the four man route and play all those guys, you, you, I, I do think running back a Porzingis in order: Porzingis, Kuzma, and Beal. I think all three of those guys are totally worthwhile what runs back run backs. And if you wanted to get super creative and play a five man and it's like a like a just just hey the, as you say the big T type of thing. You can play five from Orlando and then play Gafford with one of these other guys from Washington as, as, a, as a seven man stack for one game. And it's ballsy, but it's something that I've seen work before and I wouldn't mind trying it. Oops. All right. Uh, Want to talk about Phoenix and Toronto? Um, the other thing is you don't have to even play Gafford. I mean, you could play Brzezinas. 
No, but, but Gafford's starting now. It's not the right. same Gafford that we've had all season long. They, 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 they're starting him alongside Porzingis these days. Um, and I assume they do the same thing. And, you know, he put up 30 fantasy points in his last game. Uh, Orlando tends to have two bigs that, well, on the court, even with this smaller let rotation. You got, well, I guess they won't have two. Orlando has no bigs today, right? right. What's that? Orlando will have no bigs today, right? I'm... Well, Schofield, Ben Caro, Ben Caro's huge. That's um, true. And Bull Bull and Schofield. So that so there's three guys in your starting lineup. So I do think they'll start Gafford again. They've played better with him as a starter. The, you do lose minutes to the Ruri Abdia stuff uh, if Beal's back. If Beal's not back, it would make him more appealing because then you could play him. He'll play, he'll get more minutes alongside of Ruri and Abdia rather than them playing small ball five yeah. slash. You know, I got to say something else, by the way. I mean, your boy Ruri, expect- yeah, why not Ruri? Yeah, I'm not expecting 40 points again, but 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 it's not. I was also expecting a little bit more respect for the salary. You know what I mean? But I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. But that's what he always is. He's always 4K. So maybe 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 this is maybe this is fair. You know what I mean? Maybe it's not that great of a maybe it's not that great of a play. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a little bit of a reach, but it makes there's there's some logic. So is my Gafford play a reach? But I think I think there's some there's some argument you could make. You talk yourself into it for, for a full game stack and using one yeah. of them. All right, uh, Phoenix, Toronto. Um, I think this is going to be a basically a pass on Phoenix for me, and then I need to know whether Van Vliet's playing to even comment. Um, right now, something is broken with the the, the ownerships on Sabersip, which is just kind of funny. They have basically everybody on 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 Toronto at, as ninety percent are owned. Yeah, they do that sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so it's a little bit broken at the moment. So don't don't yeah. that. Um. Toronto actually played really well without Van Vliet last night and against a very, you know, a Memphis team that we were sort of seeing struggle for the first time. Uh, if Van Vliet plays, uh, I'm just inclined to probably not do a whole lot here. Uh, you know, Scotty Barnes and Ananobi are totally fine at their prices. If Van Vliet does not play, we go back to the same old suspects again. And it's not going to be like with a blazing, we have to play these guys, but they're, you're going to consider Gary Trent. You're going to consider, uh, uh, you know any any of the the, the, the other spend ups and and I think you could even consider Malachi Flynn. I know we have other value, but you know he was two for twelve last night. He had twenty four fantasy points and on a two for twelve night. Um, makes a couple shots. You know he ends up with a really big night. But but I guess I would be less interested in the value because we have the other obvious value spots. Maybe the right thing to do is if there is no Van Vliet, just just stick with one of the Scotty Barnes, Ananubi, or Siakam. Yeah, I mean same thing. We have to. Uh... And we gotta see who's playing. Mm-hmm. Uh specific specifically Van Lee. Um otherwise, um, I guess I thought I thought Scotty Barnes is reasonable. Um mm-hmm. but nothing like I said, if, if if all of them are playing, I'm probably not gonna I'm probably not gonna do that much. Yeah, it feels like a pretty uninteresting game. Um well what a, what a, what about Siakam though? Um oh he's a good play. Yeah. It is a back to back, and you know, there's there's routes for him not to always get there. I told you last night was a really tough matchup for him, and it was. Um, it, it's you know, but he 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 only shot eight of nineteen. He still put up fifty fantasy points. Feels like a pretty safe bet. I mean, but I would probably only play Siakam if Van Vliet's out on this slate, just because again, it's not it's not like an ideal matchup, you know. Yeah. Um, and then Londale, I'll talk about on another slate. I don't think this is the right slate to play Londale. As of, right, as of right now. All right. Next up, we have the Lakers in Atlanta. Um, a lot of Q tags on the Lakers tonight. My guess is the only real Q is LeBron, but I have a feeling he plays. I don't really, I, I'm really unsure what they're going to do. Um, but whether LeBron plays or not, I can promise you this is a, a time where I will go right back to Russell Westbrook. Um, I love Westbrook at low ownership here. Great matchup for him. Great game environment. Uh, has been getting the you know the, the minutes back up and when it when it when they matter and I like I like getting you know a little bit of Westbrook and I actually think it's a really good matchup for Trey so I think those guys are totally interesting and then I think you uh you mix in some John Collins and a Kongwu's and I think that there, there's a little game stack to be had here but it's going to hinge on whether the fact whether LeBron plays or not obviously yeah if LeBron plays I like LeBron um I think I agree with you. I think whether LeBron plays or not, I think I like Westbrook also. Here's a question. Do you have, do we have any, I don't say data, but at least your, your memory on, on how these guys do together in, in DFS lineups? Who? Westbrook and, and LeBron? Yeah, I mean, without, da- well, it's weird because you're only talking about a very small, you know, you're talking yeah, about Davis with this group. Um, yeah, they've been fine. I mean, they, we just, 
we had it. It's, it's, it's not probably ideal in general for ceiling like performances from both of them, which you might need on this slate. Um, I, I would rather split them up, but it, but I think you can totally, if you're going to stack the game or get a mini stack of the game, I think you could play the two of them together. I have no problem with it. They, they don't, um, I mean, the problem with LeBron is he's, he's a 10 K guy. Who's really not the same kind of 10 K guy anymore. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't have double, he, like he hasn't had double digit rebounds since November 26th. Um, I don't know if LeBron's ever gone that long. He's had one game over 10 assists. And this is a guy who used to average 10 uh, in December. Oh, actually, he had two in December. Um, the steals and blocks don't exist for him anymore. Uh, the free throws are, he had one game where he shot, uh, I guess he had two games where he shot over 10, which is what it used to average, like 11. Like, um, you're counting on a, basically a guy who's going to shoot, take a lot of threes and not really attack the glass like he used to, not going to, to initiate offense as much as he used to. Still does some of it, just not to the same level. So he's 10-1, but it feels like uh, it, you're not getting the same. It's not the old LeBron you're getting, but it is the kind of matchup you, you can play him in. I just would probably want to play Trey Young on the other side if I spent that much on LeBron and just hope the game kind of goes nuts. For for Atlanta, I like uh, going back to uh, Okongwu at mm -hmm. 5,300. He's probably my favorite Atlanta guy. Yeah, I think, I think Okongwu is in play, and I think that – I think uh, Thomas Bryant should at least be considered, but I, I do think a Kongu is probably a little bit better. Um, so I would say a Kongu or Collins. I mean, look, if we just if, if you just get the right one of the, the Collins a Kongu thing, you're you, you're in for a pretty big night. I mean, Collins actually had two really good games in a row, and it should probably be a lot more. A Kongu uh, just came off his best game of the season, with, or second best game of the season with 43. So yeah, I like I, I'm I'm in on those guys, and then I think that you fill out your pieces with the with the trays and, 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 and I, th I think getting some DeJounte makes sense too. Even if they play both play, I'm just totally cool with taking shots against the Lakers every time with these athletic guards. So that's where I'm at. Um, but I, I think this is a, a really good place to spend some of your money that we're going to be saving from these value games. So right back to Detroit here. So Detroit at Chicago, the only guys you have out for the fight are Killian Hayes and Hamadou Diallo. Um, but that's that's a that's a pretty big deal. Um, the 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 guys that are showing up for me are back to Alec Burks at forty four hundred. Uh, um, Corey Joseph at three k. I mean, he's going to show up at like five point five x if if with with uh the point card out. He just always does. Um, yeah. I don't know if he's going to play, but <laughs> uh, he is three k. If he starts, then yeah. Um, but then Jay Nivey looks decent enough. Sadiq Bay looks decent enough. Uh, then I guess you can go back to the bigs too, uh, Stewart and Duran. I think I, you know, listen, um, I think the, who's, I, I still think the Orlando value is better, but I think all these guys are, are, are pretty reasonable. Yeah. You know, I wanted to fade Alec Burks. It's a little bit harder when you take away the other guards, um, yeah. <laughs> the guys who tend to get in his way. Um, I'm curious how they, how they, what starting lineup they go with tonight, by the way. Um, I think Sadiq Bay is a terrific play, first of all. Uh, even if he's not starting, I don't care. I think you're, I think one of Stewart or Duran, I like Duran a little bit better. Um, and I think that Ivy and Burks are completely legitimate. And we've seen the Bulls just completely, you know, have some, just some, some dreadful games at home. It does, there is some blowout risk here. That's why I mentioned that. I mean, just anytime Detroit is playing and not, now, now they're missing a lot of their, lot of, well, a couple of their guys anyway, even Killian. And obviously there are, they're missing the, their best player for the whole season. Um, so I, I can be, t I can definitely get on the Detroit thing, but I don't see it as, as a have to, I have it as Burks or Kongwu, I'm sorry, Burks or Ivy. I think you could play them together. I'm, no, I'm just saying that I, those are the guys I like to time it kind of split up a little bit. And I think you could include Bogdanovich into that mix. Um, and then I, I, I think that the Sadiq Bay, uh, Stewart and Duran, you know, I, I like all three of those guys. I think Duran's my favorite. Stewart is my second favorite. I'm sorry, Bay is my second favorite, and then Stewart would be my third. Um, and look out for potential Marvin Bagley minutes tonight um, if he's if he's good to go. That's what that's just throwing that out there. If he was a little, if he was like three K, I think we could take a shot on him, but I don't think he could do it. I don't think I'm going to do it at 4200. Chicago, you got three questionables there: um, Patrick Williams, Kobe White, Allen, Alex Caruso. So have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah. Um, Andre Drummond has been doing that that thing, you know what I mean? Uh, where he makes the most of his minutes from rebounds, and 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 I think he put up ten x in his last game. Just doesn't seem to be the way you 
you're supposed to play though you know um, <laughs> it just feels wrong right yeah um so i'm probably gonna let that get me i think uh i'd have just rather play a kongwu you know what i mean uh take 40 minute upside as opposed, you know what I mean? as opposed to like a 16 minute cap pretty much. So, uh, yeah. Uh, if all those guys are out, then we have to assess and uh, the San Mu is going to be probably a good play. I mean, every day he's 4,100, 35 minutes or whatever. is probably reasonable, but uh, I don't know. Uh, Not the record rate slate for it. It doesn't. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, so I'm probably off Chicago unless all like, some of these guys are out. Yeah, Caruso is still, but yeah, I mean, everybody's question, but I think Caruso's going to play today. He's probable now. Then they're all out for me. I mean, what's that? Then everybody's out for me. Yeah, yeah, I just can't quite get there. And then Dragic got all the non, like, I guess super large field. I guess my favorite would be Dragic, but like, that's got to be a large field play. That's not like a thing you can prioritize. It's sort of like the Mark Williams play of last night, which ended up winning all the money. <laughs> it did, didn't it? They announced the other guy in, and then nope, you know what? We're giving him the job, and he's good too. Like I, so, I was wondering if it was going to, sh- you know, the tide would shift. I didn't realize it was going to. He was going to go nuts. He played like, you know, he, his point per minute was like the best of the season for anybody. It's pretty incredible. Um, all right, Philly, uh, Philly, New Orleans next for you. Oh no, no, you know, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have Giannis versus Minnesota. Giannis versus Minnesota. Okay, what are your thoughts on this one, Sheets? Well, um, I think Giannis is going to have a good game. Uh, Why is he projecting poorly, or not better than he is? is I don't know. I got him. I guess okay. Yeah, I uh, guess he's okay. I guess you're right. Sorry, go ahead, Jeez. I mean, let's look at Drew Holiday here. What's his news here? He's doubtful again. So, I mean, yeah, I don't think he plays. I, I really don't want to. I'm. So, I really don't want to play Javon Carter. You don't have to. We got. Don't have to. There you go. Don't particularly want to play Grayson Allen. Just, but that's just because I'm mad. Um, he was I'm mad at him from his from his last game. Yeah, maybe he might be a good play in this Actually, spot. I think he is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he just might very well be a good play in this spot. I mean, anyway, uh, but I think Giannis is kind of a lead here. Uh, uh, on the Minnesota side, um, I don't know. I mean, Bigs are supposed to be okay here. Gobert seventy one hundred might be all right. Um, I don't think anybody's really a priority here, I, I, but I do like Giannis. And remember, you could probably, you could probably do a couple of spend ups here. Um, so I like Giannis, and probably oh, I'm going to do it, aren't I? I'm, I'm probably I'm going to go back. I'm going to I'm end up playing Grayson Allen. I know it. Yeah, I, I have, I have, uh, I, I have actually. I, I oh wait, you got wait, wait, you got you got to pause this. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Hello. Yeah, so we were just finishing up talking about you know the the the, the Bucks the Bucks Wolves. Um, so the Grayson Allen Giannis seem to be your your, your thing. I, I think I mean I think Giannis is a great play. I actually think that the early projections be damned. He's going to be very popular today. Um, by the time it all gets said and done, and I think there's totally good reason. I don't see how like if you watched anybody watched the, any of the game the other day, it's just all Giannis, man. I don't know what you're even looking at. I, I, I have a co- total projection of like 64 fantasy points, which yeah, is, and that seems good. I, 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 and the early ownerships are, are rough, but because usually Saberson at least has a little bit of a, something, I mean, they got him like 4% owned. Well, I, because they have the Toronto guys at 90%, right. Or whatever. Yeah, but you could still, you could still get these. Guys. Okay. Oh, so that's why the Toronto guys. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Sure. I think so. Good point. Good point. Um, and then on, on the other side of this, like, well, I don't see any reason why we have to stop playing Nas Reed. I don't see any reason why Anthony Edwards doesn't deserve some tournament shots. And that, right. that does make me kind of want to play a Grayson Allen on top of it and throw one of like, like the uh, one of Edwards or Reed. But it's only if Kyle Anderson's out for me that for both those guys, it's a big boost if Anderson is out. If Anderson is in, it's much harder for me to get to Reed. Um, and it's probably it's a little harder for me to get to Edwards. I had D'Angelo Russell has had some good games against these guys in the past and just a willing shooter against a team that give up threes, even though they don't give up as many as they used to, they still give up a lot. Um, I think he's interesting a little bit, but it's, you know, again, these pieces are, they just feel kind of weird when you compare Russell to all the guys in Orlando um, or even some of the guys on the Pistons who are a little cheaper. Um, but, I, but I think there is some, some merit to, to maybe taking one of these pieces of Minnesota playing it with Giannis and Grayson Allen or something like that. I think that makes a lot of sense actually. So that's where I'm at for there. I, I, the Grayson Allen one is certainly one. If you look at the game, like if I just look at the game log sheets and I wasn't watching, 
it actually would make me want to play Grayson Allen. I'm just going, okay, the guy's four for 16. He puts up 22 fantasy points. Right, so, right. Yeah, that's true. You know? So that, so I think that's something we have to consider as the, as the day goes on. All right, Philly and New Orleans. What do you got for me here? I think there's some, uh, some, some, some big players in this game. Um, I'm not getting to him. Uh, you, you like, you like anybody here? I, I, I don't really like, uh, I don't like, I don't like anything. Who, who, who do we like here? Harden and Embiid are both going to continue to smash. I just think I, I, I've been watching them play a little bit lately. First of all, they're playing great basketball. Um, I know they lost their last one, whatever they the one, what are they ones? Eight out of nine, seven out of eight, whatever it is. Um, Harden has been over 63 games in a row. And I think we have to start keeping an eye on it. And it, there's nothing outlierish at all about what he's doing. He's not shooting. He's not shooting especially well. He's getting 5 million assists. He has over his last three games, he has uh, 48 assists. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, he's also rebounding the ball. Uh, and you know, he's got he's got he's got pretty decent uh, steal upside because he gambles on defense so much. And then you get Embiid in there against really anybody, and Embiid is really making his case to be, you know, the MVP. Um, he put ahead 48 and 10 the other night against Washington, had kind of a dud against the Knicks before that, but 63 right before that. I, I think playing one of these, like if you're not playing Giannis, my my take is that you like I have these guys ahead of LeBron. Um, when you like think about Harden versus LeBron. It's, it seems like LeBron has to go so far out of his way to get to 60, and Harden just gets there every night, you know? I, for me, and it's a good matchup. So I like the I like the Harden or Embiid. And by the way, I think that if you wanted to get, you know, if we get if we have more extreme value, these are two guys you could actually play together. Um, they, they have been both getting there in a big way. And this is going to be a tough game for them. So when they need it, these guys basically get all the usage. If either of those guys fail, it'll be the Anthony Melton thing. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do any of that. And I can't get to anyone at these prices because the Pelicans are priced as if Zion was out still. And I'm just not going to be able to get to any of the Pelicans today as of right now. But I, but I like these spend ups today. I'm, I'm sort of counting on having even more weird value and, and I'm going to get some weird lineups out there. I'm playing, I'm going to play a lot more lineups than I usually do today. Probably because it's my last one. I have to stay at home because they're installing new stuff at my house. So I've got nothing to do, but, but pay attention to DFS and, and build some furniture. <laughs> Right. Um, so I'm going to be around for it. And I, and I, and I love getting some, some multiple exposure there. I, I think that the one play you could make maybe from new Orleans, which is feels thin, but we know there's upside and, and the minutes are all over the place, but I, I think taking a shot on Jackson Hayes is, is not the worst idea in the world, but I'm probably not going to be able to get there. All right. Uh, heat and nuggets. Go ahead. Sheets. Um, I like Jokic. Um, Jokic seems like a good play. Uh, let me just see. Anybody else is kind of showing up for me here? Um, no, I mean, I don't know. I I don't even know if I don't even know if Jokic is that great a play. I mean, I just have Giannis is just much better. Uh, I have LeBron is much better. Yep. So I'm just kind of I'm kind of off of this. With respect to Miami, I mean, obviously, as usual, I, I I don't even look at Miami anymore until until I know who's playing. <laughs> um, I have Bam as like a reasonable play, but I I, I got to know who's playing, and uh, that's pretty much it. I, I hate to hate to be like this, but I don't have too much from this. It looks like Miami's got their guys playing, which means nothing for me. And I have like the only thing that makes Jokic even reasonably appealing to me tonight. I mean, again, this, so this is legitimately the worst matchup possible for Jokic. Um, uh, no one's going to play him. He's, he, he will be the star who literally zero people play tonight. If you want to take that and play a, a 1% Jokic, there's certainly reason to do that. It just feels like, how am I going to play Jokic over Giannis, who has nobody around, nobody to support him? Jokic is a, has his most likely full complementary of players, maybe doesn't have Jamal Murray, even still, and has to go up against the best – you know, the guy who was number two in defensive player of the year at center and was the highest rated defensive player at, as a big last season. And the only type of player that Jokic ever seems to have any struggles with, although it's not like crazy struggles. It's, it's like he probably gets in the mid fifties or something instead of the mid sixties more often here. Um, and it's just not enough for me to play him. So sort of off this one with the exception of, I've really liked what I've seen from Michael, Michael Porter Jr. I think that that leap that, that he, you know, it's sort of like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm flirting with the idea of just, okay, this guy needs to be 7K or you just, anyway, you just play him every day because he's just going to put up, 
you know, he'll have some 20 fantasy point games, but he's going to have plenty of 40s to 60s. And it's a tough matchup, but he's just one middle piece that I well, I was considering um, as a possible pivot off of like Franz Wagner, who's going to be obviously really popular. But nothing, nothing special for me in this game at all. So Portland Golden State, I do have interest in. Um, I have interest in Damian Lillard at 9,700. Um, and also I will go back to uh, – so Mr. Ceiling, I will go back to Mr. Yer- Nurkic at 6,700. And I would even consider Josh Hart for Portland at, at 5,800. Um, so I like, I like all three of those guys. Um, I, I guess if I'm going to do that, I have to consider Draymond at 6K and probably, uh, probably Jordan Poole, although I don't, I started not to enjoy playing him if you want to know the truth. So I'm going to start with the Portland guys, but I think this could be a good game stack. I mean, it's, it's 230 point total with 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 a, with a with a small spread. I think what, what you, you can mess around with is is you play like Lillard with 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 somebody from Golden State, and then you use the values in other games to make that work. Mm-hmm. I think that's very possible here. It just feels hard to me, like like and I, and I get it with Lillard, and and we, Lillard just with a, obviously has the ceiling every time he steps in the court. But like, if you just took the numbers, okay. And you just compared Lillard versus Harden and actually who has more like even responsibility in their offense, which, which you, you think is kind of funny, but like, I just think Harden is, is, is has a higher floor and ceiling than Lillard does by a lot. Um, maybe it's not ceiling. I get, well, actually, yeah, he does have a higher ceiling. Um, so it's hard for me with Lillard unless if Nurkic was out and if Simons was out or something, then I could consider it. I just think it's hard to get there for me. Like I, I I like the idea of stacking this game. It's like you said, a big total. Um, I do think that, that Jordan Poole is going to have, you know, he, he shot the, if he shoots the ball well, you're going to get a lot out of him. And it's kind of, it is kind of getting a little annoying playing and we're not getting those really big games lately. And, and part of that is because Draymond does run some of the offense. And I, I like, I think, I think that it's reasonable to take some shots on, on both Draymond and, and Poole and probably do it in different lineups that aren't game stacks. Um, I also think that a team that allows threes, it's hard not to like, at least mention Clay Thompson's name. Um, he's put up 42 and 44 his last two games. He's 7,100, which is very reasonable. But no, nothing that stands out like just like as an awesome thing. I do think the Josh Hart thing might be a really good play. Um, this feels like a game where Nurkic maybe doesn't get all the run he got in the last game and goes back to the mid 20s. Um, but if he does play, I mean, he can. He, we know he's got a ceiling, like you said. Um, so I, I'm sort of up in the air on the, what to do with this one. As of right now, I probably am just going to be on the one of Fool or Draymond or Clay uh, side of things. I don't think I'm, I'm too interested in anything else from it. Uh, one of these values may hit, but I don't know if you're going to need it. All right, Utah, Sacramento. Well, 240, <laughs> right? Yep, big total. 240, big total. Uh, Sabonis is awfully expensive at 10-3. At center only. He's also available. He's not center only, though. He's also available in the utility position <laughs> if you want to do mm-hmm. that. Um overall, I don't really think anything is that mandatory from this game, though. Um I, I like Malik Monk sort of at 5100, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um Sabonis, I guess at 10 3 looks reasonable, even though. Again, that just that positional eligibility is rough. Yeah, I hate I hate to fade this game. I I know, really it feels do. wrong, doesn't it? Maybe I'll maybe I'll just root for Portland and Golden State like extra. Yeah, um, I, I'm having trouble like to, like with this one because it it, it looks like it's a great total. Everybody's playing like it doesn't it doesn't you know I think that your your best upside play is probably Deer and Fox. Um, I do like Sabonis here a lot. I just 10, three is a lot. And, you know, how do we rate Sabonis again? I'll, I'll use another uh, example of James Harden. Um, there, I think they're pretty close. I think that it is pretty interesting though. that Sabonis, I mean, you're talking about a guy who's put up over 55, uh, what seven games in a row in a, in a, in a plus matchup. I think I can be talking to a little bit of Sabonis. So I, I actually think I'm going to write down a Sabonis and Fox. Um, and I think that it's going to make me want to try to play one of these other later thin things in case I want some switchability, um, which maybe means the Jordan Poole, Draymond, or Clay thing, one of those three, 
with uh, with like a De'Aaron Fox or a Sabonis or something like that. Um, be nice to get a cheap piece in that we could always shift off of in case we get late news, but I don't really have one that stands out. Maybe, maybe Ty Jerome um, would be the one guy I'd consider from Golden State, but it is, it is an interesting slate and it's going to be, you know, interesting to try and get different, different ways. Cause I, I think that these spend ups, I, I really like tonight personally. I think that Orlando, you're doing the, the two to five thing. I think you can play as little as two. I think you can play as many as five. I think that the same is true about Detroit, but less so. I, I do think that you want to try to get the guys who will have the balls in their the ball the ball in their hands. Uh, Alec Burks, Jaden Ivey, and then I would like to or Bogdanovich, and then I would like to get to some uh, you know of Duran, especially some Stewart. I, I think the, the Duran Akongu center center thing is is kind of interesting, but you're you, that, that you can't really do that because okay you know you can do that because Bull Bull is now forward eligible. But if you play those three guys. I think that you're already you, you've you've done your savings by and and you've got you know you still haven't even utilized all the Orlando and Detroit guys but just I think the Duran Akongu does does make a lot of sense at the same price range as your centers and then you use uh, some Burks I actually like the lineup build you've got there a little bit I just the only thing I, I worry about is the uh, the LeBron Westbrook together without and well I guess you'd have to run back in Akongu a little bit um, but yeah that that's what you've got up on your screen is essentially. You, how you look at the slate with maybe one more piece from Detroit and maybe one less, I guess one less piece from Orlando, but something like that is where, how a lot of lineups are going to look. Although I don't think people are going to play Westbrook. Um, and I am going to, I, I'm going to be well overweight on Westbrook tonight and may, may, maybe people will catch on to it, but I think that's going to be a really big play. And I, I have it Giannis followed by Harden, followed by Embiid, followed by Sabonis in terms of spend ups tonight. And Fox. I have I have I have Giannis kind of clearly as as the best, so Me I'll make sure, I'll make sure to get him in. Yeah, I think that Giannis is like I'm playing three big lineups on DraftKings, two on FanDuel. He probably ends up in three or four out of the five lineups I make, and it's only going to be just weird stacks that don't get him in because he does. It is really hard to see him not getting to near seventy in this game. Yep. All right. Well, it should be a fun one, guys. Um, we'll, we'll be live uh, with you six Eastern. Hopefully, she's yep. a little better. Yep. And uh, and hopefully we can make some money tonight. So we'll see you guys in a few hours. Sounds good.